All right. Um, covering power of the consecrated heart today. Okay, see that? Part of the ministry school project. Um, I'm going to break one of my rules here, uh, typically of public speaking and my videos. I'm going to actually read. Uh, read a little, bit, a little bit more than what I normally would. Um, so, again, trying to keep my... Uh, my video is tight to the point, uh, but going through this, um, in, in, it's like this with all the books, right? Um, there's just so many different points. There's point after point after point, and you know, what are we going to focus on? What are we going to talk about? But right now, we're going to talk about um, having a hardened heart, okay? Very early uh, in the book, we're talking about uh, setting the stage, right? Okay, so what we've learned through the program so far uh, we're talking about when you're we actually you're, you're putting together a sermon, right? You're preaching. Um, you want to talk about the stories. The reason why Jesus taught in parables was because people remember stories. They may not remember everything that you said, but they're going to remember how you made them feel. And uh, they're also going to remember the story. They're going to be like, oh man, the, the hard soil. So, so the sower was just throwing seed on the ground. Some of it landed on the, the cement. Obviously, nothing happened with that. Uh, you know, others yeah, got choked out by the thorns and, you know, uh, never established a good root system, got choked out by the thorns, and then the other stuff, you know, produced a 30, 60, 100-fold return. Okay? So or so is the word. Okay? Here's where we're going with this. All right, back in the, uh, right when Jesus was returning from the dead, all right? I mean, talking three days after the guy was crucified. You know, so it was a pretty tough time. Like, so mentally, mentally these uh, these disciples are going through a real tough situation, okay? They're they're scared. Like, their leader was just killed. <laughs> you know? Jesus just got killed by the Roman soldiers. Okay. Now we're hiding. And in my, my revelation, I mean, they're hiding in this dark room and they're peeking out of the little peepholes and, like, uh, hoping that nobody finds out who they are. You know, who knows if anybody was looking for him, but that's an opportunity for the enemy uh, that the enemy took and, and said, listen, you, you're full of fear now because we just took care of your leader. Now, you go hide in this room, this dark room. Then Jesus came to save the day again, right? Uh, so let me go ahead and read this real quick. Okay, Jesus almost reaches a point of complete frustration when faced with their hard hearts. He reminds them how they gathered, how they gathered up the results of an abundance of miracles. Okay, so... I mean, they're going through everything, water through wine, um, you know, withering up the fig tree. Um, and and then further uh, down the road, this, the page here, um, Mark 16, verse 14. Um, this is where I'm talking about the room, okay? In this passage, Jesus had risen from the dead, and the disciples are sitting in a room full of fear, right there, full of fear, okay? We know where fear comes from. Once you identify it, you can cast it out, right? After following Jesus and seeing his mighty works for three years, he rebuked them for being hard-hearted. Okay? You know, I'm not going to get into the, the reading the scripture here. Um, and, and so here's the underlying point, right? Catch this. Jesus, the Holy Spirit has done so much in your life. Okay? Jesus has done so much for us. You've been told before by some people in sales and things like that that you don't, you can't, you can't read your own press clippings. You can't um, focus on everything good that you've done. Well, I'm going to challenge that right now. Okay, let's talk about this. Talk about David, David and Goliath. Okay, David killing a lion with basically a club. He doesn't have a gun. All right, that would be my choice weapon. But when when it comes down to it. Here's like, here's people just like us. We talk about Benea, you know, one of uh, King David's warriors. You know, he chased down a lion, all right? Clubbed a lion to death, all right? Wild animals, 200-pound humans. I mean, that, that does something for me because I'm a guy. I'm like, yeah, hunting down a lion, hunting down a bear, you know? But the, the Spirit of God came on these guys, right? And and filled them with the strength and the courage and allowed them to pursue that 
beat that animal, beat that giant in, in their life, and win. Because they understand that they give the glory back to God. Okay, they understand that. All right? So, having a good, pliable, soft, you know, make sure make sure that the, the, the spirit can work with you. Okay, so going back to the press clippings, you know, comment that I was mentioning. Sometimes it's good to go back and look exactly what it's God, done, God has done for you. Because it's a good reminder, why wouldn't he come through again? Right? He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's going to make sure you're taken care of. Yours... You're going to, for those of you who have kids out there, you're going to make sure your kids are taken care of, right? At all costs. That's the same thing your daddy in heaven's going to do for you. you got to understand that. You absolutely got to understand that. So, going back, got the book, Power of a Consecrated Heart. Take another look at it here. Page after, I mean, you're, you're always going to get something out of it if you're looking, you know, in... in, in um, uh, so that's my review on the book uh, questions on it you know reach out to me directly you know uh, you can find me on Facebook and um, uh, you know obviously the comments on the YouTube page and stuff like that so I hope you guys have a great day